Hello, this is Scott Snyder. I am President and CEO of Sundial Technologies. This is the first video about Sundial features that I have ever made. Most of the videos that you've seen me in the past, I'm either partially naked or I've been shooting bad guys. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Sundial Remote Admin. What we have here on the screen is the actual Sundial Dialer Engine, which runs on the on the dialer engine. As you know, this is a user interface and this is what you control the system with. This is a, a newer Sundial agent in what I call mini mode uh, and it's logged in with the login stress and stress is a login that is used to stress out the system and I use this for testing. So the first thing that I'd like to show you is I'd like to show you the dialer status. This is the Sundial remote admin right here and this is the dialer status. You can see here it kind of mirrors the Sundial existing Sundial engine and at this point I can go ahead and select leads to dial which I will. I'll select some of these. Okay now we have 6322 leads here. Close this and I will start the dialing. As you can see it's pretty close to real time. You have the agent stations agent queues here and you have the trunks and you also have the statistics grid. These statistics come directly out of the events tables, the monthly events tables instead of from the legacy stats table. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unpause my little mini mode test station here and you can see that I am dialing. I'm showing a little bit of less information here than I normally do on the engine. Let me make it a little smaller here and you can see that we're totally in sync here. Here's the engine and here is the remote admin and so on. Now I'm getting connects and as I get connects the stress mode is just dispositioning them as skip I believe. We'll see if it, how it updates so on. Okay so that's what it's doing and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop dialing for a second. Okay what we can also do here, I'm gonna minimize the dialer engine we can start stop the segment. We can, oh, in simulation mode, I typically have to stop it twice. It's just a bug. I'm going to pause myself, but it's only a bug in simulation mode. Um, on this dialer status screen, we can start and stop the segment. We can change the speed of the segment, the lines to station ratio, the drop rate target, the adjustment frequency, and decide whether we're going to dial only if agents are available, as you would in a smaller segment. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. We can look at various dialers and various segments. The only criteria for the Sundial Remote Admin is that it is installed in a place where it has access to the SQL Server. I can cycle through segments by hitting Next and so on. I can also set this to reopen at startup, which means this form will reopen when next time the Sundial Remote Admin is opened. So some of the features of the Sundial Remote Admin that I have enabled, and there's more that can be enabled, are the dialer status as I've showed you here, the lead selection, which actually is a little bit enhanced from the current lead selection that's on the dialer engine. We have the ability to put in campaigns starting with whatever, and it will filter them out and give you a quicker way to select leads. You can also, let me clear this out, you can also set your criteria as in the other lead selection, uh, use dial using a SQL statement, and you can uh, create, you can see a debug trace in case for some reason lead selection is not working. This button here, email this info to Sundial, this is going to be popping up on all of the features that you see soon. This way if you have an issue and you email support or you email me and I ask you please be specific, you won't have to because it will automatically tell me what you were doing. Now here we have some of the other features of the remote, remote admin. We have the station status. Station status is equivalent to the station grid that you use in the dialer engine here. Icon view, station view, and that's where you can see some information specifically about the stations and who they're connected to and so on. I'm not sure if it's used that much other than to move stations from segment to segment, but I put it in the remote admin just for continuity. You can also run, query SQL, uh, run SQL queries here. 
select oops select top 10 from leads and get queries here and you can access the common queries which also some of them are actual actual reports you can also save and open SQL files that you've saved and you can export to Excel the reports that we have here are the standard reports that you're probably pretty used to and I'm gonna go over this in another module okay and let's see now we have some of them let's go through some of the other things you're more familiar with first we have the do not call process and the do not call process allows you to let's get some of this stuff out of the way do not call process lets you process the national do not call list and the state do not call list in the US and also if the formats are somewhere in other countries you can also process them this way this actually adds a record to the DNC table and it updates the leads record to 1002 or do not call you can also manually enter the do not calls and then process them you could move the existing do not calls from the leads table into the DNC table and you can also verify to see if a DNC record is in the DNC table let's put in my cell number which I'm sure you all know don't call me on it ever please um, verify does not exist in the do not call table okay also we have import leads and this looks pretty familiar from what you've seen in the sundial query okay with the uh, new import leads this is actually a beta and it has the import mapping set up in database tables so it makes it a little bit easier to centrally manage the importing without without having to worry about import map files the goal is to move a bunch of uh, items out of any files and text file configuration files into central location central locations on the SQL server now we have the agent set up here which is where if you have validate login equals one in the SC engine any it will require that the agents enter a login that exists in this table these agent and station settings I'm going to go over another, another time because they're related to the newer vb.net sundial agent and the scripting this is currently in beta right now this is the segment setup and this will actually uh, replace the current segment setup that is on the sundial engine with the additional ability to create segment groups so I know a lot of you have shift changes and you'll go ahead and you'll you'll make changes to the segment in the afternoon and these are pretty much changes that you make every day with this you can actually group them and call them say this is called default but you can call it day or night for example and you can set a line setup here and the line setup actually travels with the segment group so if you have the line set for certain features for certain times of day it comes with you this is a, also in beta but it should be released very soon I've moved um, some of these things to tabs just to give it a little bit cleaner look text to speech setup is a whole another feature that I'll discuss at another time I wanted to uh, talk about a couple other things here there's something called campaign agent campaign grouping currently right now you separate your agents into segments where you set up a static group of phone lines with that are dialing a specific group of campaigns for a specific group of agents with agent campaign grouping you basically set up groups of campaigns and this would be the campaigns that are in each campaign group these are the overall campaign groups for example and then what you do is you specify the agents that are in each campaign group now the benefit of this is it lets you um, specify which agents can receive certain calls so for example if if you and it also allow you to have everybody in one big segment so if you have certain people that are only qualified to sell certain products it will skip them in the available queue or if they're only in, uh, licensed to sell certain products it will skip them in the available queue this feature has to be turned on in the SD engine any by setting enable campaign grouping equals one this also requires that validate login equals one be set and that you have agent logins here next thing I want to show you is the 
inbound setup. The inbound setup, and here's one that I'm setting up right now for my friends in Finland, allows you to specify the DNS, which is the typically the either 10 digits or last four digits of a phone number that, some, that a customer calls in on, attach it to a campaign, not necessarily a campaign that's imported, but one that you actually have named, and you can specify what happens during the call flow. So for example, when an inbound call is answered, it will play a greeting, it will play a WAV file. Let me see if I can play this prompt here. Well, it didn't quite play, so I'm not sure if that's just an audio issue with this uh, video uh, captured uh, thing that I'm using right now. But basically it lets you specify the call flow. So you can play a greeting when the greeting is complete. You can play another greeting. You can put a wait in there you can play in another greeting and so on and so on the typical flow is something like thank you for calling sundial uh, your call is important to us and then please wait for the next available agent then you wait a while 10 15 seconds please continue to hold for the next available agent you might repeat that every 10 seconds and then you would say um, please continue to hold or press any key to leave a message and you might repeat that to twice every second at, and then it would be please leave a message after the beep. Now, this is the basic setup and I see that I actually did forget to check for digits to see if they pressed one to go to voicemail so I will fix that before I implement it. The inbound blending is very very powerful it's in use by uh, some companies that are exclusively using it for inbound and to transfer ver or third-party verify those inbound calls. That's about it on this introduction to the Sundial Remote Admin. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.